Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, let's start this tutorial. Uh, so today we will go to this uh, lab six, uh, multi-level feedback queue scheduling. Uh, and if you have any questions for this tutorial and for the uh, upcoming assignment, uh, you can contact me. And this new assignment will be uh, released in this uh, weekend. Uh, so uh, in this lab, uh, our main goal is to uh, understand uh, and try to execute uh, and uh, imitate a uh, multi-level feedback your scheduling. Uh, so first, <laughs> let's uh, review the scheduling rules. <laughs> Mainly you have five rules here. The first one means uh, if we have to process uh, and the process A is priority is higher. So we will first schedule the process A. And the second rule means uh, if they have the same priority, this priority means they are in the same level of the queue. So in this way, we will schedule A and B uh, in round robin fashion uh, using the time slice of the given queue. Uh, and the third rule means uh, when we have a new process, uh, how we uh, decide where it should go. So in this rule, we will place it at the highest priority, which means uh, it is in the uh, topmost queue. So if at the same time we have another job uh, arriving, so we will schedule the job with the smallest uh, process ID first. So the rule three describe uh, how we, uh, how we uh, process the new jobs. And the first rule uh, is that uh, once a job use up the time allotment at a given level, uh, the priority will be reduced, which means we will move the uh, move the process to the uh, lower level queue, and it will be placed at the tail of the target queue, which means it will be scheduled uh, last uh, in the in the queue. And the fifth rule means uh, after some time period s, uh, we will move all the jobs to the system uh, in the system to the topmost queue, which means we a uh, reassign the priority for all of the process in the system now uh, and sort all of them by the process ID, which means the job with the smallest uh, process ID will be scheduled first. Uh, so the these five rules are the basic uh, basic rules for multi-level feedback queue scheduling. Uh, and this, uh, these rules uh, are the same with uh, what we talked in the lecture. Uh, but what you should know is that uh, in our assignment, uh, maybe we will change some, uh, some of the rules, uh, especially for the uh, sorting part. So you can find in rule three and rule five, we will sort the job uh, with the uh, PID and the smallest one will be scheduled first. So in the assignment, uh, it will be changed. Uh, uh, so when you work on your assignments, uh, please note for this, uh, for this part. Uh, and this is, and this is the, uh, over the review of the schedule, material feedback scheduling. So now, uh, we try to uh, have, a uh, we try to know how can we execute a uh, multi-level feedback queue based on these uh, five rules. So first, uh, we will uh, define uh, how we uh, provide the process. Uh, so basically, uh, we will have the uh, process number n, uh, and for the following uh, n rows, uh, we will have uh, uh, n defined definition for the process. Uh, so 
or one row for one process, you can find we have the process ID uh, and the arrival time and the execution time. So the execution time means how long the process needs to be uh, scheduled. Uh, and the arrival time means uh, when will it uh, go to the system. Uh, and we have the process ID here. Uh, and uh, for the queue information, uh, we, all, we have a similar definition. So first, uh, we have a number for how many queues we have, which means uh, uh, how many levels we have. And then we define the peer rate S. Uh, this means this, this S will be used uh, for the uh, row file, which means uh, for every time S, we will, uh, we will reassign the priority for all of the uh, process. And then for the following lines, uh, we define the uh, time slice we used for the queue and the allotment time for the queue. So they are uh, sorted by the priority. So the first one is, is, the, is the queue with the highest priority. And the last one is the one with the uh, lowest priority. So <laughs> with this process information and queue information, uh, we can try to uh, we can try to uh, use the rules to execute uh, to scheduling this process based on this uh, queue. So here uh, we will have a multi-level feedback queue scheduling example. Uh, so first. Um, while executing the uh, scheduling, we need to figure out the process uh, in different queues during the whole procedure. So in this way, we know the we know the order of these different procedures, uh, pro processes. So in this way, we can uh, we can uh, schedule them based on the based on the order. Uh, so now we give to we give one example. Uh, the left one. The left box shows the uh, process information. So here we have file process, uh, and they have different process ID. Uh, so some of them may have the same may have the same arrival time. For example, the process one zero two three and uh, thir uh, thirty six. They both uh, they will both arrive uh, at ten, and they have different execution time. Uh, similar, uh, we have a uh, queue information example. Uh, here we have three levels uh, queue, uh, and all of them have different time slides and allotment time. So the highest priority queue, uh, the time slides is 10 and the allotment time is 30. And we have a period S. So with this information, we will try to uh, schedule this uh, process we provide. Uh, so here, uh, we will have this demo. Uh, in the left, we show the process we have and the three queues information. Uh, and on the right, uh, we have three queues, uh, Q3, Q2, and Q1. So they are sorted by the priority. Q3 has the highest priority. Uh, and for the queue, the left, uh, the left side is the tail and the right side is the head. And on the bottom, we have a time schedule. So this will help us to record uh, during uh, which period we, uh, we schedule which process. Uh, and now let's uh, begin this demo. So at the first, uh, in the, at the very beginning, the time is zero. So th there is no process running. And uh, when the time goes to 10, uh, you can find from the process uh, information at uh, time turn we have two process arrivals uh, arrive arrive the first one is uh, 1023 and another one is uh, 36 so according to our uh, rule 3 we will sort the process id arriving at the same time uh, by the process ID. So the smallest one will be scheduled first. So 36 uh, will be uh, enqueued first and then process 1023. So in this way, uh, when, we, when we need to schedule them, we first schedule process 36. 
So until now, any questions? Okay, if not, let's go, let's uh, continue. So, so at Hampton, we have, we have two process enter. Uh, so <coughs> we schedule the 30, we schedule 36 uh, first. And here for every process, we record the remaining time. This, this will record uh, how many time uh, the process should be executed uh, at this time. So, uh, when the time goes to 20, the process 36 uh, use up the, uh, uh, the time slice and, and uh, at the same time, uh, it's uh, remaining time is zero. So, uh, so we will remove it from this queue. So at time 20, we will process, we will, we will begin to process uh one zero two three and uh, in the time schedule we will record the 36 here during turn to 20 <coughs> and uh uh let's look at uh process information at time 20 we do not have any process arriving so we continue to uh uh schedule process one zero two three so we have at time 20, at time 30, the process uh, 1023 finishes the first slice in Q3. Because from the Q information, you can find uh, the time slice of Q3 is 10, and the allotment time uh, is 30. So this means uh, process 1023 can schedule the in Q3 for three times. So this is the first time, and we record it in the time schedule from 20 to 30. One zero two three, and uh, at time forty, this process finishes the second slice in Q three. So we have uh, thirty to forty. We schedule one zero two three, and at time fifty, process one zero two three finishes the third slice in Q three. So also we call this. and at the same time we find the allotment time of Q three thirty. So Q3 should be moved down according to our rule four. So we move it down to Q2. At this time, at this moment, uh, there is no process arriving. So we must uh, uh, schedule this process again. But for Q, Q2, you can find the time slice is 40. So once we schedule it, uh, it should be continuously uh, running for 40 milliseconds. But uh, during, uh, because this time is 50, so after it finishes the time slice, it will be uh, 90. But during uh, this period, you can find from the process information, uh, we have process 1, 2, 3, uh, 13, and 12 arriving. Uh, so we will arrive, so we will enqueue them one by one. First, at time 60, uh, we enqueue process 1, 2, 3. And at time 70, we enqueue process 13. And at time uh, 80, we enqueue process 12. And until time 90, uh, the process 1, 0, 2, 3 finish the first slice in Q2. And we record it in a time schedule from 50 to 90, we have one zero to three. So up to now, any questions? Do not, let's continue. Uh, so at this moment, uh, I have a question for you. So. Uh, which process will we uh, scheduled at this moment, uh, 90? Half? Any other uh, answer? Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, so 
uh, at this moment, we should uh, schedule process one, two, three. Uh, because you can find from the process information, one, two, three is the first one uh, arriving. The first, the first process arrived. And uh, in the queue, uh, one, two, three is at the head, head side, which means for the queue, we can only do the in queue and the queue. So for the D2 operation, we only uh, have the, we, we can only access the, the first process in the in the queue. So at this moment, uh, process one, two, three should be scheduled. Uh, so at so because the uh, time slice is 10, uh, we should uh, execute it for 10 milliseconds. So at time 100, process one, two, three, finish the first slice in two, three. Uh, and we record it. Then, according to uh, rule two, uh, for the process in the same uh, level of queue, we should run execute them in round robin fashion. So we move the one, two, three to the tail of the queue. And at this moment, uh, which one should be scheduled? Yes, uh, process 13 should be scheduled. So at time uh, 110, uh, process uh, 13 finishes the first slice and we record it. And similar, uh, we execute uh, process 12 and record it. Uh, and we, we still begin to process one, two, three. So it's the second slice, and then process 13, the second slice, and then process 12, the second slice. And we record them. So all of them had drawn the second slice in Q3, and then for the last one. So at time 160, process one, two, three, finish the third time slice in Q3 and we find the allotment time is only 30. So uh, what we need to do at this moment, yes, so we should uh, remove one, two, three from two, three and enter it to Q2. Then uh, for process 13 at time 170, we have the similar operation. And then uh, you can find now we need to schedule process 12, but the remaining time is only eight. So at time 178, process 12 finish, we record it in the time schedule from 170 to 178, we have 12 here, and uh, we remove it. So at this moment, uh, we only have three process in Q2. Uh, so which one should be processed at this moment? Yes, uh, 1023. So we begin to schedule one zero to three. You can find the time slice is 40 and allotment time is 80. So we schedule it uh, until time uh, 218. You can find uh, process one zero to three finish the time slice. Uh, but this note, you can find that uh, during time 50 to 90, we have our we have already scheduled process one zero two three for one time slice. So this is the second time slice it, it's uh, used in Q2. So at this moment, we should move down one two one zero two three to Q1. And uh, we schedule process one two three and record it. 
So then process 13, and we record it. So both of them finish the first time slice in Q2. Uh, and uh, at this moment, the time is 298. But please note the time period is only 300. So we, we only schedule process one, two, three for two milliseconds. Uh, and we record it in time schedule from uh, 298 to 300. We have one, two, three here. And at this moment, we need to move all the process to the topmost queue. And according to our rule file in this tutorial, we will solve them by the PID. So the smallest one should be scheduled first, and then we have this one. Uh, so at this moment, uh, we need to uh, schedule process 13 first, and then process uh, 1 to 3, and then process 1, 0 to 3. And we record them in the time schedule. Uh, so at this moment, all of them finish the first time slice, and then the second, the second round. At this moment, process one to three, uh, the, the remaining time is only eight, so we only use uh, eight milliseconds to finish it and record it in the time schedule. From uh, 340 to 348, we have one to three here. And uh, it's finished, so we remove it. And then we schedule process one zero to three. So both both of them finish the second time slice. Uh, and then we schedule process 13. Uh, so at time 330, uh, 358, it's finished. So we remove it and record it in the time schedule. Then we process, uh, we schedule process one zero to three. This is the third time slice, so we move it down, and then uh, use uh, use uh, twenty milliseconds to finish it, and uh, record it in the time schedule. So at this moment, we have uh, finished the schedule for all of the uh, file process, uh, and we finish, and then we can get the uh, scheduling results. Uh, and you can find it in the time schedule. So it will tell us uh, at which moments we schedule which process here. So based on this, uh, you can uh, clearly know of the uh, clearly know the whole uh, scheduling process. Uh, and here there is a question. So the question is. Uh, if remaining execution time uh, is less than the time slice, we do not complete the full time slice duration and directly move to the next process. The answer is yes. Uh, so, so use the process one, two, three as the example, uh, because at this moment, uh, process one, two, three, the remaining time is only eight, uh, but the time slice is 10. So we only utilize eight milliseconds to finish it. Uh, and the time schedule will stop at the 348. And we began to uh, schedule process one zero to three. So if one process, uh, uh, the remaining time is less than the time slice. We just uh, uh, we just uh, utilize one of the we just utilize the uh, the time it uh, it needs. And for the remaining time slice, we will uh, give up and begin to schedule another process. So, any other questions for this? Uh, for this scheduling. If not, uh, let's go to next part. Uh, and then we will talk about the output format 
for the material feedback to scheduling. So the formats will be utilized for your uh, assignments. Uh, so we will assume the scheduling begins uh, at time zero. And uh, we need to write down the results uh, in, the, in this format. So uh, first we have the temp slot. So this means uh, uh, we have the, uh, at, at uh, time x, we, have, we begin to schedule one project. And at time y, we stop the, we stop the uh, scheduling for the project. And then we have the project ID and the arrival time record it and the remaining time, which means at time y, the remaining time for this process. So with this, uh, with this uh, format, uh, here is an example for the scheduling results uh, for our demo. You can find we have the time schedule here. Uh, so we have the re, uh, scheduling results table. Because at the very beginning, uh, during time one, time zero to time 10, we do not have uh, any uh, process to be scheduled. So we do not have this part in the results table. So it will start from time 10. So from 10 to 20, we have process uh, 36, and the arrival time is 10 because 36 uh, uh, will be finished at time 20. So the remaining time is zero. And uh, during time 20 to 30, we have process uh, 1023 and 30 to 40, 40 to 50, all of them are uh, 1023. And remain time will will be 150, 40, and 30. And then we have the uh, 50 to 90, we have 1023, remain time is 90. Uh, and then we have new process, uh, 1, 2, 3, and, uh, uh, 12, and 13 and 12. So they will all scheduled in round robin fashion. So we just write down them uh, one record by, rank, by one record. Uh, and uh, at time uh, 178, you can find process 12 uh, finish. So here I utilize another color, the green one means uh, the process uh, had the process finished, but uh, do not utilize the full time slice. Uh, just like the question we just uh, discussed. Uh, and then <coughs> we have uh, one zero to three, one to three and 13 uh, to uh, do the round robin, to be scheduled in the round robin fashion. <coughs> and uh, here we have another uh, color, the wrong one. Uh, you can find uh, this means we have the time period. So here I use that another color to mark it. Uh, uh, and then we have uh, all of the process in the highest priority queue. So we run them in a robin fashion. And here for the uh, process 13, So here it will, it, so here we use another color. It means the process 13 uh, has finished and at the same moment it utilizes the full time slice. So we use the, we use the purpose to uh, mark it. Uh, and uh, until the time 300, 98 of the process has finished. So we stop. So that's the output uh, format. So for, for any other uh, details, 
uh, information about the output, uh, you can refer to the provided document. Uh, so any other questions for this uh, tutorial?